Hey guys, welcome to my video tutorial. Uh, it's been quite a time. It's been a while that I haven't had time to record some videos, and finally I got some time, and I decided to, you know, um, so and share some of the knowledge that I have acquired to the communities out there. Anyway, in this in this video talk, I'll, what I will do is I will be talking about how to use Web API into the web form applications. And then I will I have a ba simple application, basic CRUD operation application using AngularJS. So basically, I will be doing some CRUD operation using AngularJS in the from the client side, and of course by using the Web API that will be residing in the web form application. All right, that is my goal. That's what I'm trying to talk about here today. So I have the project, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna explain to you how to do stuff like this one by one so uh, so what I have done very first thing that I have done is I ha I created a you know waveform application here called waveform and web API that's my name that's my uh, project name of course and then in this project my goal is to you know uh, add a Add a, add a web API class and try to consume that service from the HTML page using HTML and JavaScript. Okay, so and then of course you know I have a the all the, all the markup the HTML and, and all the AngularJS markup everything is inside this uh, stock market HTML which I will be explaining to you later. And all the AngularJS related code, JavaScript, AngularJS related code is right here inside the. Um, it's my script. It's a uh, stock market app. All these files are related to, to the, the little, little, little application that I have written. Okay? And then, this is my you know JavaScript part, and that's my HTML I showed you. And now, of course, you know, um, for the persisting the data to, to, I have a SQL server here. I have just, what I have done here is basically create a table. I have, I create a little database called Star Market Daily. The, the, I, the demo that I'm, I'm about to show you is basically, you know, persisting some stock market data, daily stock market data and something like that. Very simple information that I would like to persist. Okay, and to persist the data, I have just used the link to SQL, which is very easy, you know, just to drag and drop, and your DAO would be ready. So let me show you my DAO here. Here's my data provider. Like I said, you know, in this in this example, I, I, don't, I don't have any fancy entity framework, anything, or any, and Hibernate or anything, just simple into SQL to persist and pull some data from the backend database and save it and stuff like that. But so here is my I'm trying to open the design. Okay. Okay. For some reason, I cannot open my um, entity framework. I mean, the my link to SQL. You know, the Visual Studio generated code. But anyway, this is my update. Stock market daily. That's my model created by. Um, Link to SQL, which you can see right here. This is the object here, stock market daily. That's basically correspond to, you know, I'm not really talking about link to SQL here, but basically correspond to that particular table that I have in my backend database. This table here, and corresponding to that table, I have a, you know, this Visual Studio automatically created table for us, and that is the one I'll be using in my data provider. So in here, I have a, two methods. I have a couple of methods here. This first method gets all the stock market value, 
basically um, gives all the information is pull out all the records from that table without any filter or anything and this one is just to persist it's not market that comes in and make sure you know data is there and just save those data into back in database and this one is just to delete the record by the ID very straightforward link to SQL uh, code right okay that is DAO, now DAO part is this DAO part is done now I have to write my uh, controller of course the, the, here is the controller let me show you it's called stock market controller of course the web API so what you have to do in a web form is basically it was a little tricky this is a Visual Studio 2013 sometime you know by default when you when you when you go into here and try to add um, web API web API controller whether from b2 or b1 sometimes if these naming spaces might not be there in your project if they are not there then you have to add Add reference to this to HTTP or a, this dot HTTP and web dot HTTP. Sometimes you know, like when you do this one, it's a little you know little uh, trick for you guys. Sometimes you might not be able to find this one when you go in here and try to add a reference. If you don't find that particular assembly, then you have to go in inside the framework, then go into the extension and try to find it. So sometimes they might be in there. That is a little uh, thing that you have to keep in mind when you adding the web API feature. And then, like I said, you know this this is all uh, this is all I have right here. I have a public method called get that is to get all the stock market data that I have in my system in my database, in my table. And this is just to post the data for that, that come. That I will show you how to do posting later from the Angular JS. That's where this method being would be called and this little method is just to delete the records so I have three method three web method API to that I have used I haven't finished the edit portion yet so this is only third two of them okay anyway having said that other, other, most other, other important thing that you have to do is just by having this is not enough you have to f do some configuration in the web in your web project the configuration that you will be doing to to make web API enable is in the global ASAX file. You go in here. Um, this is what I had to do. So I you have to go into the route table um, and use the map HTTP route. So just to give name whatever you like default API and then. And this is the, the, the path, his API that is followed by the my controller and then ID portion which is optional. And then other thing in I need to like I have to slightly modify this one because um, to to make delete work I had to add extra configuration here. So this API is saying basically match start with the API I'll show you in the, in the browser later and then you have it starting with the API and you have the segment variable controller which matches with the stock market controller and then the action right in the case the action would be delete and then you would like to know this parameter delete by what number I mean like you don't want delete so you want delete by ID or something that's what this guy is referring to okay once this configuration is done now you you if you go into browser then you should be able to um, basically face the data from the server let me first show you how that would work okay to let me open the new browser here and then I was here is API and it's stock market this would make a git request so just to See, basically what happened is like there is I have one data I mean one record in my table let me go ahead and add one more now S&P values S&P closing market value I don't know maybe 1800 or something uh, it went up like three points or something in a given day today that one extra record is added now if you go into this you refresh again 
it pulls out a decent data because we added